All right, we're back in congruence 14.3, and we're going to look at a, an example here. So we're given that sides DG and DE are the same length. That's what that one notch means. And angles GDF and EDF are the same size. That's what those two notches mean. Which triangle congruence criterion do you think could apply to prove that triangles DEF and DGF are congruent? So they're talking about triangles D. E, F, and triangle D, G, F. So when I look at this, I'm actually only given, right, here's the side and here's an angle. So with a side and an angle, I can either use side, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So either this angle needs to be the same as this angle, or I need a side, angle, side, this has to be the same. So I think I'm gonna use side, angle, side because these are the same, like those are the same side. So I think I'm gonna use side, angle, side. Now explain why I cannot use side, side, side. Okay, so let's go back here. To use side, 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 I would need to know side, side, side of this first triangle and side, side, side. Well, I know one side, right? And actually, I do know that this is the same because it's literally the same line, but I don't know this. And it's really important, I don't know G, F, and G, E. I don't know those. And um, I can't make assumptions. And that's really important when we're doing these congruences. Just because they look the same doesn't mean they are the same. So we don't want to make assumptions here. So use a congruence criterion to prove that sides EF and GF are the same length. So I can prove it, not assume it, but approve it. So which congruence criterion can I use? Well, I can use side, angle, side. And I can use, I can say, okay, triangle, let's see here, triangle, where are those letters? DEF is congruent to triangle DGF because of the congruence, congru congruence criterion side, angle, side. Because side GD is congruent to side ED. And the order does matter, right? We're saying that G corresponds to E, so it is important that G comes first and E comes first. So GD to ED, or you could say DG to DE, as long as the order matches, D goes to D, G goes to E. Because these are congruent, their included angle, D, we'll use three letters, and the middle letter is the one where the angle is. So it'd be G, D, F, G, D, F, is congruent to E, D, F. And notice that these line up, our Ds match up, and our G and E match up. And side DF is congruent to itself, right? It's the same thing. So that means side GF must be congruent, GF, EF, EF, because the triangles are the same. And that's how we prove that they are the same length. All right, go ahead and give this a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. There we go. So naming triangles is really important, making sure that they match up and that you use the correct notation. So if you saw kind of back here, congruent symbols and equal with a squiggly over it. So conditions that do, and we saw it actually over here for the first time, yep. Congri conditions that do not specify. So we know that these three mean that they're congruent, but what other criteria is there, right? So we've already seen some restrictions on the side lengths and angles when we use those criteria. When we use side, 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 the longest side must be shorter than the sum of the other two. When we use ASA and SAS, the sum of the angles or the single angle must be less than 180. What if we specify the three angles? Um, we're going to see 
in the next section that that does not give us a unique triangle, but similar triangles. In side angle side, we specify the angle between the two sides, right? The angle is the included. But what if we specify the lengths of two sides of a triangle and the size of an angle that is not between? So here they're giving us the sides, little side B, A, and C. So if we look here, they're saying, okay, B has to be this long. But the thing, and A has to be this long and C has to be. So it's side, side, angle. And yes, I said it in that order for a reason. <laughs> okay. So the thing is, is that B has to be this long. It could also go in this direction, right? This B, let's say it's three, it's still three over there. So side, side, angle doesn't actually tell us one triangle. It gives us two triangles. Now let's talk about other shapes, specifically quadrilaterals. We saw that different lists of property could specify the same category of shapes. So for quadrilaterals whose opposite sides have the same length is the same as the category of quadrilaterals whose opposite sides are parallel. These are two different ways to describe parallelograms. When a toolbox or sewing box is constructed so that the opposite sides of the quadrilateral ABC are the same length, the opposite sides will automatically become parallel. The tools of a sewing supply will therefore not fall out when the box is open because the top drawer remains parallel to the bottom drawer. We can use congruence criteria or symmetry to explain why this works, and you're going to see a video in your MyLab on this. The next exploration that you're going to do will help you explain why every isosceles triangle can be decomposed into two congruent right triangles, and every rhombus can be decomposed into four congruent right triangles. Because of this property of rhombuses, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular and cut the angles of the rhombus in half. In general, the diagonals of quadrilaterals are the line segments that connect opposite vertices of the quadrilateral. So don't skip the next two explorations. Here's that first one. Press play when you're ready to move on. Give this exploration a try and then you're going to learn more in your MyLab video. And then let's do an example here. See the quadrilateral. Given that sides AB and AD are the same length, see how they have one notch. And notice how they name them AB, AD, the A's correspond and the B and D correspond. And sides B, C, and D, C, those have two notches, are the same length, and see how those correspond in letters and naming. Use a triangle congruence criterion to prove that the diagonal A, C, so that's not here, divides angles A and C in half. In other words, prove that angles D, A, C, and B, A, C are on the same size, wait, let me get rid of that one, and B, A, C, so this half and this half, are on the same, are the same size, and that this half and this half are the same size. All right, let me drop a bigger one in here so we can kind of play with that. All right, so let's take a look at this. We need to show um, that these triangles are congruent, so then half of their angles. We need to show that these triangles, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle B, oh, nope, we want to match it, ADC, so it would be ABC, ABC. That's what we want to show. Okay, well, let's look at what we have here. We know that this full angle, right, are congruent, but we don't really know anything about this little angle here. We don't know, and we don't know this angle, and we don't know this angle. But what do we know? We know that this side and this side, these are congruent, right? What did I got here? That should be one. So we, and then what do we know about AC? That's the same, AC is, the same line, so it's definitely congruent to itself. So we can use side, side, side to say this. So these are congruent by side, side, side. So by SSS, they are congruent, which means corresponding angles are congruent. 
And that means that angle B is congruent to angle D. And that means that angle DAC is congruent to BAC, which is what they wanted. And that means that angle BCA, BCA and DCA are congruent, which is the other one they wanted. So go ahead and give these a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. They may take a little longer. Don't skip them. Give them a shot and check your answers here. And that concludes section 14.3.